Shalom, brothers and sisters. Today's Thursday thought is going to be on loving your neighbors, specifically your LGBTQ neighbors. Now, I want to briefly explain two things. One, for people who are not a part of the Latter-day Saint movement. I know a lot of people who aren't Latter-day Saints will ask me, why are Mormons so obsessed with sex? You got this polygamy stuff, you got the LGBTQ stuff. I mean, why are you so obsessed with what's going on in people's bedrooms? So I'm going to really quickly explain this to you. In the Book of Mormon, the Book of Alma, Alma, this is Alma the Younger, is writing a letter to one of his sons. And in there, he says that what that son is doing is, is next to murder. And so you have to ask him, what's that son doing? Well, he's hanging out with this harlot named Isabel, and it's leading people away from God. So many Latter-day Saints, I don't know about many, well, many Latter-day Saints, yes, as far as I was going to say churches, but not all Latter-day Saint churches. Some Latter-day Saint churches interpret this to say that sexual sins are next to murder. However, if you actually know Alma the Younger and you know his story, you know that when he was younger, he actually led people away from God. He and the sons of Messiah. And when he was born again, when he had his come to Jesus moment and he repented, he went back to these people and said, hey, I was wrong. I'm sorry. Please come back to God. And they said no. So in his mind, he spiritually murdered these people by leading them astray and not being able to help them come back to God. So when Alma says to his son, this sin is next to murder, he's not talking about sexual sin. He's talking about leading people away from God, telling people there is no God, making people think that God isn't real or God doesn't need to be followed. So that's why Latter-day Saints have this weird, unhealthy relationship with, with sex, gender, those types of things. To my Latter-day Saint friends, I know it's really easy to go into the mistranslated Bible and grab stuff to push this agenda. Unfortunately, that's not what it says if you go to the original languages. And I am not a biblical scholar. I don't have a PhD in translating Hebrew. I'm familiar with Hebrew and Greek. I've studied both of them. But if I told you I am an expert, I would be deceiving you. I, I am not an expert. I know enough. The Lord has blessed me with the gift of translation. But when it comes to what I'm about to tell you, this is not coming from me. It's coming from actual experts that I went to to find the truth. Because I went years ago to write an article to prove that homosexuality was a sin and that these people needed to repent. And I was going to get every ounce of information. I, this was like a research paper. In fact, it, it was a research paper. And when I was done, I got on my knees and I repented to God for the things I had said and done up to that point. Because everything I believed was wrong. In Leviticus, when it talked about homosexuality being a sin, that wasn't in the Bible in the English translation until the, what, I think it's the 1940s. And if you actually go back to the original Hebrew, you have to look at it in context. You can't just translate things literally. Back then, there was a problem with pedophilia. It was considered a normal thing. And Jehovah was against that. Jehovah, Yavah, whatever you want to call the God of the Old Testament, he saw that as the abomination that it is. And so it's written into the law of Moses. No, no pedophilia. And it is mistranslated in Leviticus because people with an agenda wanted to be able to say that something they didn't like was a sin. Then later on in Deuteronomy, in the Hebrew, it talks about temple prostitutes. You cannot have a male temple prostitute. Yavad, Jehovah, the God of the Old Testament, has always been against temple prostitution. It's throughout the Torah. And unfortunately, some people mistranslated it to push their views. Likewise, Paul in the New Testament. Again, another mistranslation. When a man uses their position of power and authority to sexually control another man, which I would call rape, that is a sin according to Paul. And I don't disagree with Paul. You should not 
do that. But it's not saying that homosexuality itself is a sin. Okay? So you can't just grab a Bible, open it up, and say, this, this is what I'm looking for. This is saying what I want to believe. You have to open it up and do your research. You have to do your due diligence. And I'm not telling you to just believe what I'm saying. Go look it up yourself. Go do your research. Go find the facts. Because I did, and I repented. Now, if you still, after all that, you know, you believe that homosexuality is a sin, then I would encourage you not to practice homosexuality. And you probably think that because you're straight anyway. But really, what when it comes to sin, what we need to be looking for is our relationship with God. Because if we're truly born again, if we've really come to Christ, then we can't help but let that light of Christ shine through us to others. And as that light shines through us, we grow grace by grace being purified. So if it were a sin, which it's not, then it's going to be purged out of us. Because it isn't, we know that it's not. So yes, there are some times when you have people who may think that they're homosexual because of a certain environment they're in or transgender or what have you, and it turns out that they are not. And that's why having the relationship with God is so important. But at the same time, we know that there are people here that are born, I don't know if incorrectly is the right word, but with two sets of genitals and, and other issues. So the idea that a person would have a male spirit in a female body or a female spirit in a male body doesn't really sound that out of bounds to me. I, so trans, being transgender doesn't seem like something that, that couldn't happen because of the fact that we have people, when they're born, the doctors don't know if they're male or female. Likewise, throughout, you know, I, I was raised on a farm. We had gay geese. I know for a fact that homosexuality is throughout the animal kingdom. It's not something that humans made up. And it's been around forever. There were homosexuals in biblical times. And yet, Jesus never talked about it. The Book of Mormon doesn't talk about it. Joseph Smith didn't have any revelations on it. So, if you don't think that homosexuality is for you, don't be a homosexual. Pretty, pretty simple. But what God does say is to love your neighbor. In fact, he says to love your enemy. So here's my question for you. If we're supposed to love our neighbors and love our enemies, which are the members of the LGBTQ community to you? Are they your enemies or are they your neighbors? And if they're your neighbors, then just love them. But if they're your enemies, why? What makes them your enemies? What is it that they're doing that you disagree with? And then go and love them anyway. Because that's what we've been commanded to do as Christians. So, my thought for you today is this. Love everyone. Let God sort it out. Stop worrying about what somebody else is doing. And worry instead how you can love that person more ask yourself why is it that x y and z sins in your mind are more important than the sin of not helping those in need not loving those that need your love and guidance as christians our responsibility is to be a doorway for the light of Christ, a window for the light of Christ to shine into the world. And I promise you, we can't do that through contention and we can't do it through hate. We can only do it through love. If you love someone and you think someone is doing something wrong, then love them. Let God let them know what they need to do. That's my prayer and my thought. I share it with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.